up. Uh, Jordan has more. That's right. We're joined once again with uh, Jenny Marie Batistin. So the first uh, first segment we talked about why people are starting to break up during the quarantine, but you're saying there's still ways to save the relationship. How and what can you tell us on that? Absolutely. You know what? We can rebuild a relationship. It takes a little bit of work, but you know what? You can be amazed how quickly you can turn it around. One of the easiest ways is to begin having what I call an SOS meeting. Have you ever thought of no. having an SOS meeting? SOS? Yeah, it's like a business meeting for your relationship. This is a great time to check in with your partner and say, hey, how did this week go for you? Was there anything that worked well? Anything that annoyed you? Anything we could be doing better? As well as maybe we check in on our finances, how we're doing as parents, or do we want to become parents? really checking in with your partner and not assuming you know how they think the week went. And that's where you get all the feelings and emotions out and try to communicate uh, as best as possible. I like your next uh, saying here, the gr greener grass on the other side, but rather the grass is greener where you water it. That's a good saying. Right. Absolutely. You know what? Problems that you have probably 69% of the time are going to be perpetual. And if you can learn to navigate those and find out what upsets your partner in certain situations, you can navigate those problems better. You can water your grass and your relationship will be stronger for it. There you go. But you said slow, slow work. Communication is always the best way. What about that? Uh, you say time out is not just for the kids anymore. <laughs> right. You know, I know sometimes think of time out is, oh, I've done something bad. But you know what? I like to also think of it as a time in. If you're in a fight, Take a moment, step away, go do something for yourself. Listen to a meditation, some music, go for a walk. Don't think about the problem right now because you're just going to get more angry. Mm. Take a moment, step away, come back 30 minutes, an hour later, you'll find you'll be more understood and you'll understand your partner's point. Yes, and more clear headed. And you know, Jenny, when we speak with couples who have been married for many years, 50 or 60, we always ask, what's the secret? They say, Happy wife, happy life, but it's also about learning how to compromise both equally, right? Yes, absolutely. And you know, I think when people hear the word compromise, they think, oh man, I'm going to have to lose something here. But really, if we can get to the heart of, hey, what's most important for you? What's your core need in this situation? Here's my core need. We can find a compromise that honors both of our needs. So it becomes more of a win-win rather than a win-lose situation. And that's where you talk about uh, finding and, and coming together, maybe having the same goal throughout the conflict and really sort of uh, aiming for that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, a lot of times within conflicts, we don't realize that we have a dream that's not being met. So if we can talk about that dream very much in the way that I like to call the I feel statement, that is a healthy I feel statement, I feel maybe frustrated about the way that we're parenting our children and I need for us to get on the same page rather than I think you're a terrible parent. <laughs> I'm feeling like you're a terrible parent. Not going to help the relationship. Right. Well, Jenny, we thank you so much for being with us and sharing all of these useful and helpful tips for our viewers out there. I know uh, this time is very stressful for a lot of people. You're also the author 